Hello, and welcome to another episode of Training Bites. My name is Mike Gibb from AccountsRecovery.net. I'm going to bring up Mary Shores and a special guest in a minute, but before I do, let me tell you a little bit about Mary and her guest for this episode of Training Bites. Mary Shores is a second-generation agency owner, best-selling author, and creator of the Collection Advantage online program, which is designed to help collectors create and execute high-converting scripting to increase their collections and decrease their complaints. Joining Mary today is Greg Nowicki, who is the president and partner at Capital Accounts, a Nashville-based collection agency. Greg has been with Capital Accounts for more than nine years. Mary and Greg have been working together for nearly a year on this training project, taking it from ground zero to its current state. The topic for today is focusing on the ROI, and it's my pleasure to bring on Mary and Greg for their conversation. Mary. I'm really excited today to talk to you because you were one of the early companies to go through the collection advantage. And I know you love to talk about numbers. So today I thought we could just um, inform our audience, like all things about ROI and uh, you could take it from there. Like what, what's the ROI of investing in training? Sure. Thanks, Mary. I, I think one of the, top things in most owners had or even managers as we bring new employees on is how long before we get them uh, competent where they're productive. Um, I, I think regardless of what any industry out there, you bring somebody in, how long does it take for them to transition into the company where uh, we start making money, especially in our industry, uh, at what point? And I think that we stumbled mid-2019 uh, where we thought, hey, you know, the industry is definitely changing. How we do things are definitely going to change. And some of the ways we did things uh, uh, just don't work anymore. Uh, uh, you know, every window you look out, uh, you know, every commercial you hear, you know, you're getting phone calls, you're being harassed. Uh, well, we know from our standpoint that that is not true. However, how do we defend against that? And we cross paths with you. And you talked about, how do we talk to people differently? How do we show some, some cap compassion? How do we relate to them? How do we get them just to talk to us in a, in a civil tongue? And uh, we thought that it was a great uh, segue, great, great transition for what we were looking to accomplish uh, as we went in Q4 last year. However, our, our biggest concern is the ROI. Uh, at what cost? It, you know, if you have 100 collectors on your staff or you have 2,000 collectors on your staff, uh, the first thing that we think of is, are we going to lose money? Is this going to slow down what we do? Or how do we continue to do what we've always done and transition into this, this new strategy or this enhanced strategy? Uh, one thing we have learned, and, and now that we are, what, I think we're three full quarters with you into our fourth quarter, and I think it was one of the interviews, uh, I spoke to somebody for you prior, and it just stumbled. It was like, holy goodness. We have new collectors, new employees that have never collected before that are, we call the profit column much quicker. Uh, old ways of how we collected, uh, sometimes, you know, it took people three months, four months, six months, uh, depending on what the product is, the difficulty of the product. And we realized right out of the gate that within 30 days, we saw people getting, uh, you know, to the crossover or the break even point. Uh, so for us, it was a real quick win, a real early win. Um, I, I caution, we've had much more success with people with no experience uh, versus the KG veteran that has been around the block and knows better and wants to kick and scream and think that you know, their way is better. Uh, once convinced, we got them uh, you know, to the break even. I, I'm going to say they're probably 45 to 60 days, but a brand new employee, we're, we're seeing very, very much success. Uh, in different cities that we have offices in. Um, so it, it's, it's been really uh, fascinating. Uh, in 30 years of collecting, I would say that this is the fastest we've gotten new employees to a break-even point uh, when it comes to collections. And it's, it's so interesting because like what you said about bringing on a new strategy, I mean, there's so much uncertainty in that, right? Because here, here, you know, you're talking to this, oh, here's Mary Shores. We're going to just try that. You know, I, I don't even know what was going on inside your mind. Like I can imagine 
people because the because the strategy is so completely different. And yet at the end of the day, it works and it works in so many areas. You know, it works to reduce complaints. It works to reduce lawsuits. It works to increase revenue. And, you know, when you're really willing, it can it can increase those payment arrangements for people who can't pay in full because we always want to get the consumer into that sweet spot of the arrangement. You know, we want to we want them to be stretched enough to where they're getting it paid off as quickly as they can. And yet we're not trying to take food off their table at the same time. So what I think is like when you bring in a training program, what it does is it structures everything. It, it gives it gives collectors a system to follow. And when we can get the whole organization following that system and it creates this consistency and that consistency brings the certainty, but the first part is the buy-in. So, you know, and that's not always easy. And sometimes I think it's when you start to see the numbers turn around, then you can see the buy-in happen. But prior to that, it, it can be difficult. So I'm curious, like, I know you got really excited about reducing that ramp up time. What other kinds of um, what other kinds of return on this investment do you think you've gotten? Sure, and I, I think you've hit on numerous points. Um, and and boy, you know where do you start? Uh, you know we now again, you know after three full quarters, we're looking at a couple of different metrics: uh, CFPB compliance, uh, consumer compliance, lawsuits. Uh, all these areas are drastically down. Uh, for us. Uh, what it also has allowed us to do up front is what we call the consistency factor. One of our frustrations is if, if a consumer called our office seven times, they would have seven different unique experiences. Some so not so good, some okay. We weren't happy with that either. Uh, we felt that the consistency factor of having everybody on the same page would drastically reduce uh, a lot of the complaints as we now up front handle uh, these items much better. Why and how? Because through Collection Advantage, uh, whether they're keywords we set up, uh, trigger words internally, uh, if consumer says this, this, or that, what do we do? How do we respond? How do we resolve? And uh, old school collections, I, I think that if the collector didn't like what was going on, they decided they wanted to be the authoritative figure, and this is how it's going to go. Uh, we now believe that if somebody hangs up and they're not happy, we didn't do a good enough job. We like to review those calls and dig in and say, what could we have done better? What did we do wrong? Uh, uh, through the transition, uh, you're as familiar as we are that we've brought a lot of things to you and say, hey, what do we do? Uh, this is what we see. This is what we've always seen. How do we turn this around? So we've done some of that. Uh, I, I think what's also uh, important is, is that buy-in. We talk about the buy-in, whether it's collections uh, for owners out there in our industry, whether it's technology, uh, whatever it is we bring through the door, we have three groups of people. We have group number one that no matter what's going on, whether the, the product is working or not, the initiative is working or not, it's broken, it doesn't work, it's no good, it'll never work. They wanna just be left alone and do what they've always done. Uh, you then have that second group that will say, oh, this is the best thing since sliced bread, it works, it's great, and the darn thing might not be working, you'll never know. So somewhere in between those two groups is that what I call the middle of the road group that you've got to sift through, but they've got valuable information that they're going to be more honest with you. Uh, they may buy in, they may not, but it may take a little bit of time, but they're going to give you that valuable feedback. So as an organization, you can move around, you can move along the road at the right pace and try to figure things out and make corrections where need be. No. You know, when I think about when I think about training, which is what I love to think about all the time, it's like really understanding how people learn best. And I feel like if we were to, you know, rewind a year, you know, and what did training look like at Capital Accounts a year ago? Could you just like maybe give me a brief? How does that look? How did that look and compared to how it looks now? Sure, sure. Uh, we've come a long way, uh, you know, being in numerous cities. Uh, you know, things are different. Uh, and I think that's probably the, the, the toughest, uh, I guess the toughest control is the consistency. How do we do it the same? So if we buy, say, a McDonald's franchise, McDonald's says, here's your playbook. This is how you're going to do it. This is how we've always done it. I think when you get multiple offices, uh, and heck, some of my experiences were that they've had multiple cities or multiple offices in the same city, uh, the two offices aren't the same. And we didn't want that. 
Um, so we, we took all of our training and, and we're not done. Uh, we're in, uh, uh, again, ongoing transition where the consistency is there, whether it's a syllabus. Uh, and we've talked in the past as well. This is what we've done on the first 30 days. Uh, you shared some of what you've done and, and we've blended everything together, including collection advantage. I, I can remember a manager that had a new employee walk in the door and the new employee walked out the door on day three. And, and I asked the manager, what, what went on? And they explained how they did everything. And I said, well, hell, if you hired me, I would have quit too. And that, that's when we really, you know, scratched our head and said, we, we really need some consistency. And this is the pain, the, the pain when any organization is growing, no matter what the industry is, as a company, you're either growing or you're dying. The, the growth is the fun part, but there's a lot of pain in that because we have to do things that we may not know. We may have to find new resources to help us get to that point. And it's a process. It's a very painful process, but the reward at the end, once it's done, you see that it's working, your profits are increasing, your margins are increasing. Uh, it does feel good. However, it doesn't ever stop. Because once you take your eye off of it, things can go south in a hurry. So that, that, that's, that's the, the, I guess the forewarning is you have to look down the road. You have to maintain it. It's always a progression. Yeah, using, um, I really took, I really paid attention to what I felt like were the, the key items that made you guys successful with this. And I think one of the things was making that decision that this new training, you know, the, the communication code and the things that they learned in the communication code that you made it mandatory. And I think that that is a vital difference between companies that look at sort of the tools that they give their collectors, you know, and if you're, if you're making that optional, like saying you can use this when you need to, you won't get the same result as if you say, across the board, this is how we're going to do things. And I know like for your team, it's been able to measure like which, which teams were using the code. That's what we call it. Like on the inside, we call it the code, which, which teams were using the code and which weren't. And you could see the, the, the difference in the money right away. Isn't that true? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. We, we, we looked at different cities. Uh, we looked at different training styles. We looked at experienced collectors versus collectors with no experience. Uh, we, we looked at several, um, I, you know, several different metrics. Uh, we looked at the person, uh, no call center background or a call center background, not necessarily in collections. Uh, but it, it really came down to the person doing the training. And, and we had here uh, in Nashville, an 18 year old kid that you have a three minute conversation and, and, and this is something a, an owner would know is you can tell that they just got life. They just get life. And sometimes it's not about being book smart. It's about being street smart with just common sense, how to talk to people, how to listen to people. And uh, this young man was taken from zero to hero within weeks. And on a, I believe uh, uh, you, you, you've gotten to know through prior conversation as well. Uh, and, but he said one key thing that I thought, even after 30 years, you think you hear it all. And, and sometimes you don't hear things, but this young man said, the reason why this worked is because the person that taught me took an interest in what we were doing. So many times, whether it's collection training, whether it's sales training, whether it's just a technology uh, initiative that's new to your company. The people that are rolling out the initiative don't have an interest. It's just, let's get this done. Let's move on. And, and I, that, that, that stuck in my mind. And we've talked about that as a company. Uh, we really uh, focus on it as a company, uh, no matter what we're doing, no matter what the initiative is, are we expressing an interest when we roll things out? Are we expressing an interest uh, as a group? And, and, and Mary, I think that you will uh, confirm that our initial conversation, uh, hell, I was still on the airplane, uh, try, trying to get off the airplane with you and my partner and uh, you know, into transportation where I was going. I think we were on a phone that day for two and a half hours. But 
we're all excited as a team and we carry that excitement from that conversation to where we are currently uh, inside of the company with us. Yeah, we could not have predicted like where we'd be sitting at today, you know, because when we've had those first conversations, it was before COVID, it was just, you know, before everything. And, and we've, we've had really great results. I'm really proud of them. I'm really proud of your team. And also, you know, that, that feeling that that um, 18 year old has, it's that feeling that all of your employees will have when you invest in them. You know, oftentimes our collect, you know, our collector's voice, it really is our most important asset. And oftentimes it's the least invested in. So making just a small investment in each one of your team members, I it will pay off in ways that you could never imagine. You know, it's the little things sometimes that you don't think about, but how much time you get back in your own pocket because you're not dealing with constant complaints or just to see that, you know, like one of the things Greg said a few minutes ago was like, we have this goal that we want each call to end happy. That was my original thing. When I started this program, when I started doing this 15 years ago, all I wanted was for the next person to be happier at the end of the call than they were at the beginning. And just even wanting that was enough to change the paradigm. And here we are 15 years later, and I can, I'm can i so thrilled that I get to be the person who helps age, other agencies find a way to make consumers happy. So thank you so much, Greg. Yeah. Uh, Mary, what, what other point I want to add to this? Um, it's just not about collections and applying this to consumer calls. Uh, as a company, we apply this to each other uh, within the company. Uh, we have employees that apply this uh, to their everyday life, how they talk to their spouses, how they deal with their children. Uh, so this is, uh, for us, it's been a great, transformation of how we communicate internally with each other, how we respect each other, but not only that, how we hear and listen and comprehend when we have a conversation with each other. And I think that that ROI, we can't measure. I, I think that it's invaluable. Uh, there's a subliminal hidden message in the entire program. And uh, we are a different company than we were uh, a year ago. That warms my heart. And uh, plus, we are great friends now, too, which I love as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are. Absolutely. All right, Greg, thank you so much. We'll have to do this again. Fantastic. Thank you. And, and we thank you for everything, Mary. Take care.